So, first and first, Ruben, how are you? Uh, I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm a bit tired. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, so, before we get into the new album, Sex and Food, I'd like to go back to something else. I saw a picture of you, I think it was on your Instagram, of you as a kid holding a yeah. guitar. Mm. What do you remember about that time? Uh, well, I, I didn't start playing guitar then, okay. but uh, my, my dad bought um, us a kid's guitar, so I would kind of pose with it and stuff sometimes. <laughs> I didn't really start playing guitar until I was uh, about 19. Okay. Okay. And I kind of had friends that played guitar, so I kind of would fool around with it at their house. But I, a lot of my friends were really good at it, and mm -hmm. I didn't really know. But when I was a kid, yeah, we had this cool yellow, um, like Les Paul copy, mm -hmm. miniature kind of kid's guitar. Um, I remember um, being like drawing a lot. I used to draw mostly. It was my thing. And we lived in a place called Tauranga, which is a kind of a coastal uh, town in New Zealand. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I had long hair. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of things did you draw? Um, I wanted to make comics. That was okay. my thing. Yeah, and. Um, there was a French artist called Mobius that I sort of became my hero. But I liked uh, Todd McFarlane, mm. who was he did was doing Spider Man Spawn, at the time, I and think. he invented Spawn. Yeah, and um, so those were those are my heroes. A lot of the guys that ended up at Image Comics and mm. all those guys were, right. were like my. That was kind of what I wanted to do, and my dad wanted me to be like a like a painter or something and he so he would like show me pictures of Andy Warhol and uh, uh, like a book he bought me this Andy Warhol book that was all about like parties at the factory and stuff and Andy Warhol hanging out with people and there were like pictures of naked women in it and stuff it's kind of weird it's cool though it was like a, I think he didn't want me to be a poor painter like starving and so he wanted me to know about Andy Warhol, right. who was like this <laughs> artist who like made a lot of money. <laughs> but that's interesting because I think your father was a musician as well. Yeah. Um, so, so when did kind of uh, the music take over? When, when did from, from visual art to...? Um, well, I was, at, I was at art school mm. and my dad, um, he's a recovering addict and uh, he, he went through rehab a few times and he um, he got sober on the third time he went through rehab and I would, I'd left home and it started um, at art school in the fourth step I think or the fifth step or something is making amends to people and uh, I think one of the things he did he went through a process of like trying to make it up to everyone for everything he'd done and one of the things he did for me was buy me a guitar for my 19th birthday mm. so I had so I was at art school and I was painting during the day and then I would go um, or, or painting at night sometimes and then going, uh, going back to my apartment and, uh, and then I would uh, so, so sit around and practice the guitar and sort of after a while I started practicing the guitar pretty seriously and I was doing you know, I'd do between six and nine hours a day okay. some, some days and then kind of going from not being able to play to sort of having this hunger to be able to play. And then, yeah, and then my brother started writing songs and asked me if I'd want to start a band and I thought if it was a punk band um, then it would be fun and I would want to do that and my skill level was like, you know, like uh, adequate <laughs> for that and then, um, yeah, so it kind of gradually took over like um, I started a punk band with, with my brother and we were playing uh, and doing kind of well in New Zealand and um, I was working, I, I finished my degree and then started working for a painter as an artist mm. assistant and then, and then I just uh, quit my job as an artist assistant because I was making enough money with my band to just not do it and I, I kind of just, I've just been doing music right. uh, almost solidly since then. That immersion in the guitar, you mentioned practicing for six to nine hours, what appealed to you uh, in the guitar? What, what did you find in the guitar? Um, I suppose the thing about the guitar was that it was, um, it was something that was sort of private and I didn't, nobody knew that I was doing that. Mm -hmm. um, I suppose the thing that was weird about 
art school was like all of a sudden I was in a place where everyone knew that I was making art. One of the things I used to love about drawing and making art was that um, I would go to school and nobody knew that that's what I like to do and so it was just for me and then mm -hmm. when I went to art school all of the art I was doing was for school so it was kind of like became almost like my job and then the guitar started I started to look forward to playing the guitar when I got home and I'd be painting and then kind of thinking like oh, I'm gonna practice these scales or I'm gonna learn how to play this song or whatever so I kind of started to get really excited about my hobby which was the guitar mm -hmm. and uh, yeah I think it I think it was just the fact that it was just kind of um, free and not nobody was like judging me and I was it was totally self um, self-directed or something yeah if we move on to the to the new album Sex and Food then is, is it fair to say that there's a little bit more prominence for the guitar on there um, yeah I wanted to bring the guitar back because it's my main instrument and um, I think I became really obsessed with synthesizers and it was kind of the same thing where I lost interest in the guitar a little bit and started to work on synthesizers because nobody knew I was doing it and there's something about that feeling it feels so pure when you're secretly interested in this other thing and I was kind of um, getting into um, the synth synth stuff and just uh, not playing synth just um, working on them like it was like a, I was getting obsessed with like electronics mm. and then um, and then I just had all of these I started to kind of build up a collection of synths like I would buy a broken synth and then I would fix it and that was kind of like my new hobby mm. but I ended up with some nice things and I, so I started playing them and then they ended up on multi-love like a lot of synths right. were on there and uh, um, I think then I just realized a lot of people that listen to my band really like the way that I write on guitar and like like the way that I play it so I kind of was trying to kind of focus back on the guitar um, just I think mostly because I wanted to write songs with more structure and I think I'm more comfortable there so yeah yeah I just yeah I got I got kind of pushed myself to to focus on the guitar again did you find something new in the in that instrument then, kind of going through uh, these songs? Because I, I, I saw a playlist where you had Frank Zappa and that kind yeah. of uh, artist on. Uh, it was more like going back to okay. things that I was into before, because Frank Zappa was always my uh, one of my main guitar heroes. Yeah. Uh, and there's things that I like about Frank Zappa and things that I don't like about him, but um, I really love his um, lead guitar playing. Right. I think it's like really interesting and unique and. I always just really wanted to emulate his playing. I didn't really have any vision for how I was going to play um, an or original style of my own. <laughs> and um, so, uh, yeah, I just, uh, a lot of the stuff on that playlist, I think it's like stuff from my past that I would kind of like let, um, kind of left alone for a while and come, right. come back to, yeah. Where did you start? Because Multi Love again, uh, like your previous albums, was qu uh, quite well received. So, where did you start with this process? You, you say you, you wanted uh, to go back to the guitar. Did you start with uh, one or two songs that kind of ended up? Um, yeah, I just I w one thing I wanted to do was um, write the album, you know, on acoustic guitar first, and then have all the songs kind of um, somewhat complete before moving into recording because I think these days uh, artists um, use the computer in the kind of process of writing the songs like it, you, the recording and the writing process are kind of like all mixed up into one thing so production and um, recording and writing are all just kind of one process now but I which is fine because it, 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 it's creative too, but um, the kind of songs that I write, I think, benefit from writing the song the, in the old-fashioned way before you even start to record. Because mm. once you start to record, you you get trapped in kind of simpler forms. I think, like in, t in generally, um, using the computer more has made songwriting like much more simplified. Whereas I think if you sit down with an instrument and you write a song then um, you 
you have the possibility of making something that flows a little bit more and has a little bit more, I guess, old-fashioned songwriting. Yeah. So I wanted to do that, um, return to that, because I did a lot of that in the first two albums. Right. And, um, yeah, so I just kind of did that. And then uh, and uh, production, I, I kind of threw to the second half of 2016, I was r just writing. And then in 2017, I started recording. How much a part of this? Because uh, for multi life, I mean, I think it's on the cover. It's your basement with all the instruments. And mm. um, but this time around, you kind of traveled and, and went to different places. So how much mm. of, of what you just mentioned is is kind of getting out of your own DIY basement type um, environment? I just, um, I just, yeah. I, I think it was just that I'd been in that basement a long time and I'd made two records and there were a lot of memories yeah. um, in the in the house that I was kind of I didn't want to spend all my time down there because it was it gets like lonely and kind of um, and uh, I think the adventure that I used to feel about kind of being awake at night and all of that stuff is it's now just my job so I kind of like I'm not as romantic as I used to be about kind of being the artist by himself and so I kind of um, Although I still like, it's really useful to be down there because I can make the sounds that I want to make and stuff. But uh, I wanted to get out of the basement and um, and I thought like maybe I should just travel, you know? Because I thought I could just kind of periodically leave and go to San Francisco or something and find a studio that I like there and then kind of get a break from the studio and go back and forth. But I thought it would be more interesting to try different places and kind of dream up an idea or dream up a reason to go somewhere and then and then just go and meet my bandmates there and we could kind of have like a working holiday kind of thing right. yeah the, the, there's a couple of places you you've visited Seoul uh, Reykjavik Mexico City the, there's there's one Hanoi which which interests me yeah how did you end up there um, well I guess um, my logic um, was that uh, you know, I was thinking about the music from the 60s that kind of um, still influences me a lot and uh, I was thinking about um, the, like Jimi Hendrix and stuff like that and sure. Sly Stone and just all kinds of stuff and um, I think a, a lot of that stuff I heard uh, for the first time in v movies about Vietnam mm -hmm. Um, and so I kind of realized there was this kind of connection between the Vietnam War and music that I like and kind of my childhood and stuff like that. And then I kind of thought like maybe if I went to Vietnam, it would, there would be some kind of inspiration there that would, you know, I thought I kind of sure. felt this kind of tri triangulation between, you know, the music of the 60s that I like mm -hmm. and me and then <laughs> the Vietnam War and kind of Vietnam and I, I wanted to escape like what part of the reason I kept leaving was I wanted to kind of get out of the US for a while mm -hmm. every now and again because things were really crazy last right. year and I didn't want to be like immersed in it all the time and I figured like if I'm lucky enough to have this um, luxury to kind of leave then I should use it and kind of get out and then I thought like um, it would be kind of interesting to go to a communist country, like a place that the, that defeated the United States or kind of held the U.S. out, um, and then kind of look at my life and look at um, the U.S. from from that point of view, from that environment. Right. Um, so yeah, and I went there, and it, it did kind of turn out that way, I guess. I, I suppose I did like prime myself for it, and then. Um, yeah, and it was like, uh, yeah, it was cool. It was much more like Viet. I imagine Vietnam would be like. Mm. Like, I had this kind of idea that maybe it would be like really modernized, and and I would get there, and it would be kind of not like the Vietnam that I kind of imagined. Sure. <laughs> and uh, but it was really a lot, a lot like, um, like, uh, like I kind of thought it would be. You know, it was like we all we did really was we had a, an apartment and a. The studio and we kind of had this kind of walk in between we just walk to the studio every day and then um, we had to go through these um, lotus farms and past the lake and the lake had like these fishermen and every, you know I had all these kind of um, things that I 
all these kind of, uh, the environment itself was a lot yeah. like I imagined it would right. be. So kind of it did have the effect that I hoped it would. And it was nice, the other thing I noticed was that um, there were no billboards or like, there's not a lot of branding or anywhere else. And that really had a positive like effect on me, on my, you know, the, my thinking and stuff. It was pretty good for me. And yeah, I don't know, we got a lot of work done. We made friends with some musicians there mm. that were at the studio and stuff, and we did some recording with them. And actually, there's enough um, music that we made. There's a guy, uh, guy called Ming Nu Yen. We uh, did a lot of like recording with him, and so I think that that'll probably end up being another album that will maybe okay. come out this year or something. Yeah, and, and it's 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 more like a, like maybe like Krautrock or something okay. like that. Yeah. 